clearly, if you had an action man, you had a Ken doll. Like I'm, that's oh, clearly yeah, yeah, look, yep. that's clearly like the same line we're drawing here. Yeah, you had a Ken doll, so I had a Ken doll. Hey everyone, welcome back to From the Vault podcast. It's another episode. It's your boy Dylan with Trent. It's me. Hello everyone, and Connor's behind the scenes there. Howdy ho, everybody. Uh, and today we're going to be having a chat about uh, the other stuff we love. The other company that we love and also are really critical of. Yes. Uh, Games Warhammer. Workshop. Games Workshop. Yes. Warhammer. Warhammer, Games Workshop, Citadel, whatever you want to call them. All that together. We love them. We hate them. But we love them more than we hate them. <laughs> we love them. Too. We just don't like their decision-making process sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would go so far to say we hate their decision-making process <laughs> <laughs> But not this time. Today, this we've time. got some really cool stuff to talk about. It's the Nova... Uh, just happened, the big event, uh, the Nova Open. Uh, we have the reveals for the new Warhammer models coming out. And that's not just 40K, that's Sigma, that's Warcry, that's Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl. Yep. Oh my gosh. So we got some cool stuff to talk about today. Um, and we're going to go through that all. We're going to talk about our opinions on not just the models that are coming out, but translate that into a bit of the game discussion and where it's at and stuff like that. So um, maybe we can talk about things like um, where Warcry is as a game, both in the store. And mm -hmm. externally, things like where 40K is in the new 10th edition, because I'm pretty sure maybe 10th edition, was that even out when we stopped doing the podcast before? Was that even out? I don't know if it yeah, was. I think it was right before it dropped. Right so before it dropped. I've been deep in a 10th edition. I've played over 50 games now of 10th edition, so I'm very deep into it. Um, so yeah, we'll get into it. Cool. All right. Well, where do we want to start? Trent, this is this is your baby now. Uh, well, let's kick it off. We talk about 40K to end. Let's start with yeah. that. Let's start with that. We've got the brand new Space Marines just coming out. So they've just announced. Um, they kind of they kind of like sneaky announced this um, yeah. with the new Space Marine 2. They showed off some a trailer for Space Marine 2, like three different trailers. And in each one, we got a little bit of an inkling of some of the new stuff. People were very excited to see the Primaris Jump Pack Marines. Yes. A lot of people have been asking about these since the Assault Marines kind of fell out of favor during 8th. Exactly. Eighth? Well, yeah, it was like the Assault intercessors came out right yeah and everyone was like wait you just have to, like space marines that run at you that's kind of strange yeah. like you had assault marines but you've got these assault intercessors right you have like you have tactical marines and assault marines that one the assault marines have jetpacks and the tacticals don't but then you have intercessors and assault intercessors but the assault intercessors just don't have anything special about them they've just got like, like chain swords so finally we actually had these jump pack primaris intercessors i think they're actually called jump pack intercessors and yeah. um they're incredible um, I think they're just brilliant. One of the best things, and you'll notice this looking at the line. Yeah, well, let's, Connor's got them up on the screen now for his. My God, they they look great. Tell me something that you notice about these that maybe were one of the worst parts of the Inceptor kit, the other units that had jump packs. What did they have that these guys don't? Uh, they have clear flying stands. Clear flying stands. No flying stands on these intercessors. Now, these, obviously, when you don't have flying stands, as you can see right there, you've got to bring the tactical rock. To give them some yep. kind of like push up but i think it does so much for the model it makes it look really dynamic it makes it very con like well connected to the base i think and of course it just means that you're not worried about that clear stand you're never going to paint over it. it doesn't look strange on the model as well the amount of people i've seen with suppressors who will actually like pin them to big rocks to mm -hmm. give them a lot of height because again the stands are quite tall mm -hmm. gives them a lot of height to fly around almost like jet bikes which is a little bit silly in my opinion. I mean, these ones are going to be definitely in your face. You can tell the pistols are going to be at your eye level, the like the ball pistols, the chainsaws are cutting through your chest. They're right in your face. So I just want to talk about these guys. They're really cool. Um, and how girthy do they look? Yeah, they. I do like the Primera scaling on these Assault Marines. That A lot of them do look like they're just um, <laughs> the Assault Intercessors like added two mils in on the Z axis yeah. um, and a rock added. With the new jump pack, uh, with a new backpack, but I mean that's it's the the, the, the dynamic posing of, of Warhammer Forty K now, as they've been upgrading model kits and updating model kits, has been really strong. And that's what we've always said about Age of Sigma as well: is the dynamic posing in Age of Sigma, um, with every single new Age of Sigma model kit, has been astounding. The Iron um, Deepkin were probably one of the best examples of that within exactly. the Marty. Yep. Both the Thralls and the Reavers and such have just such amazingly dynamic poses. Quite even, flimsy at times, but very dynamic. Even the Lumineth. Yeah, all oh, the Lumineth. Uh, great. Having, like, being what was traditionally in your, like, sword and board um, rank, and minis, kind of rank and file minis games were would just be, like, carbon cutouts of the same model that are, like, one pieces. Yeah. One piece very models. Very, like, Lord of the Rings movies. It's like, yeah, kind yeah, of like yeah, a CGI yeah. board of 100 dudes. Yeah. Um, but the them when they're like Allure and Sentinels that are all um I believe they're the all the boat the archers. Hmm. Um they all look very dynamic. They've got flags flying. The way they're po they're standing in their pose is very forward. It's as if there's like 
there's still activity to the model. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. bringing that design philosophy over to 40K has been great. 100%. And you could tell it is coming from Age of Sigma. There's a lot in 40K, especially in 10th edition, right? This was kind of true in 9th and a lot, very true in 10th. That is pulling from Age of Sigma. And that's mm -hmm. not just from the model quality, but also from the rules quality. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in 10th edition, they actually introduced um, kind of like minimum sized units where, you know, you either buy five Marines or you buy 10 Marines. You're no longer going do I have space for one extra Marine to have a squad of seven or eight? Do I have, like, they made war gear free. Mm -hmm. Like, do I have another five points for a plasma pistol that I'll never use and, like, won't ever matter? It's like, no, that's all free now. If you want the plasma pistol, just take it and you buy five to ten. That's a very Age of Sigma thing. It's had, um, it's had mixed reviews, I think. Mm -hmm. Some people love the kind of grainy nature of being able to, like, meticulously, like, optimize your list to the absolute nine. And there were some strange things on release. Like, for example, um, Plague Marines coming in boxes of seven, but being five or ten. Mm -hmm. They actually did update Plague Marines to make them seven because that's, for those at home, the Nurgle number. The Nurgle so number, they yeah. should probably have seven. Um, and they did. They went, oh, look, that was just was unfortunate for us. We're very sorry. Guys, it was just an oversight. We're totally sorry. Here's the seven. You know, that's just... When you make, like hundreds and hundreds of rules like, you know or, or nearly a thousand rules over the course of 28 armies and you know 50 models per you, these things are gonna happen so yeah you know we standardize a lot and that's what happens but yeah point is is yes these models are incredible i think that um the interesting part about these models is i don't know if assault intercessors will need to exist anymore does that kind of yeah because it'd be assault intercessors that move faster with the yeah. fly keyword yeah and it's like i think in boarding action which is a phenomenal format mm -hmm. of 10th edition. It's really good in 10th. It was already really good in 9th. It was designed to go into 10th, so it just gels really well. In 10th edition, you won't be able to bring these guys, or at least if you do, they will lose the fly keyword and they'll go to minimum 9-inch move, mm -hmm. right? Oh, sorry, maximum 9-inch move. So um, they won't necessarily be, just like for the more points they'll cost, they won't be as useful. Assault Intercess will be good at that mode. But again, it's like, and if you're playing Kill Team, probably that too. These may not even have rules have for the, Kill Team. Have the data sheets for these dropped yet? No, not yet. I wonder if there'll be like an objective control around that as well. Mm, like maybe maybe Assault Intercessors have a better OC stat. Yeah, possibly. Um, that because makes sense. they are less mobile as well. That makes so sense. I, the one thing I have noticed is the more mobile infantry is the less likely it is to have a higher OC stat because Correct. obviously you don't want people capping like objectives that are unachievable on the first turn. Yeah. It is also likely that these guys will not be the battle line keyword. And with the battle line oh, keyword, true. you could bring lots and lots of units of those. Um, so maybe you can only have three max squads of these jump out guys. And if you want even more aggressive melee guys, you then start bringing these all intercessors. Yeah, yeah, that um, makes sense. Or more likely um, in some missions, um, especially in the case of some like uh, open play and inboarding action as well, um, you know, battle line will allow you to actually tag objectives specifically. Mm -hmm. um, so being able to tag those objectives, walk off them and keep the objective yours um, is going to make them very, very useful. Now, uh, will jump pack marines with oaths a moment just shred through almost anything with their AP1 chainswords with uh, four plus attacks? Probably. Yeah. So maybe it's not as important. Um, but, you know, the fly keyword as well, big nerf in the new edition, but these guys will breach through buildings because they are infantry, so maybe it won't matter as much. So we'll have to see how things go moving forward. But I think we've done the due diligence on the assault jump pack intercessors. I think these guys are very cool. Very um, sexy. What is next up for the space marines? Do we have anyone else up? up? Oh, of course. new scouts. New scout marines. New primary scout marines. These guys are absolutely gorgeous. Um, these guys were first shown off in Black Templars. Yeah. The Neo fights, I think they were called. The um, Or the Novitiates or whatever they're called. No, that's their sisters. Neo fights. Um, they had a couple of scouts within their like t uh, squad. And you meant to kind of like throw some wounds onto the scouts so that you keep your big marines alive. Yeah. Uh, but this is a full squad of scouts. So these look fantastic. These like are fan freaking fantastic. I know there was a lot of people up in arms when the scout box got discontinued, but yeah. like these just look better. <laughs> and I mean, like I think a lot of people, pretty well everyone, right? Outside of those who just weren't in the know to know, you know, um, a lot of people knew what was happening. Yeah. When they could discontinue the scouts, it wasn't like, oh, we're not doing scouts. Sorry, guys, scouts are done. It's like, you know, we're doing something with this. And Simply given back that they brought out. back like the infiltrate kind of system for yes. the game as well. Yes. Like These guys will definitely infiltrate. I remember the days of fourth and fifth edition where infiltrate meant that you just got to set up some cool guys on the boards anywhere that's and, still true and now with the new additions infiltrate keyword stuff bringing that rule back with a passion yeah with those goddamn von ryan's leapers oh yes <laughs> now it is nine inches away from your post deployment zone it's so not quite anywhere you want to be but on most maps that's going to be anywhere in the no man's that's very that's uh, very strong start straight on an objective again these scouts may even be battle line which does mean they might be able to tag some objectives in some modes um and they are very cool at that 
there is a point to be made about these guys, and that is that uh, in a world of Phobos Marines, Infiltrators, Incursors, and Reavers, I mean, yeah. who, who have you, who used Reavers since they've released? But anyway, that's true. Um, in a world of Infiltrators, that's really the one we want to talk about. Hey, you use Reavers in, uh, oh no, wait, no, they're not Reavers in Combat Patrol. No, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, there might be a faction that has them, but it's like, is there a space for scouts in a world of Infiltrators? And the real answer is, and Connor's showing it up right now, Sniper Rifle, Heavy Bolter, Missile Launcher. It's these heavy weapon options. And apparently it's going to be the sergeant <gasps> that can bring the Sniper the Rifle. Camo uh, the Camo Cloaks! Hell yeah, Camo Cloaks. Absolutely brilliant. So in a world of these, it's like, if you don't want to bring a little three-man Eliminator squad with the rifles, and you don't want to commit to like a heavy Intercessor squad with a heavy bolter, you don't want to commit to like a whole Devastator squad, and you want those options but with Infiltrate, in the case of Eliminators, they do have Infiltrate, but you want those options further up the board, um, I think this is actually going to turn around. And I think these will be very efficient for their points for what they're offering. They'll probably have a four-up save yeah. on like the normal three-up because they are pretty like clothed for Space Marines. Um, and they, But they'll still have their two wounds because of course they are Space Marines. I, um, I think these will probably see more play in Kill Team. I hope so. I don't know if they'll have rules immediately. We'll have to see how things, things go because Kill Team 2 obviously uses a different rule set unlike yeah, Kill yeah, Team yeah. 1, which was just to put them in the game. Um, but we'll see how things go. I would be very excited to play these in Kill Team though. These would be very awesome to play Kill Team. Uh, an they fit the vibe of Kill Team so well. They really do. An Intercessor squad in Kill Team used to be five models and they actually had to buff buff them and give them the sixth model because they were finding that like it just wasn't competing too much they made what was called the intercession squad so you could bring a mix of assault intercessors and intercessors and give them cool war gear and such all in this amazing squad it's one of the most interesting factions you can play in kill team and from a kit bashing perspective it's it is probably mm -hmm. the most interesting um and i think like having the scouts and having the heavy weapons guy uh, maybe bringing seven models yeah not eight i don't know if you go that far but maybe seven models you could really get away with a lot there's a lot of flexibility in it. Yeah, and again, and they got and that. there always was there always was in the scout in the scout kits as well. Yeah, absolutely. I was a guy who played only five man squads of only sniper scouts, so I don't know if that was something that I ever interacted with. <laughs> the really awesome <laughs> flexibility. I was like, no, only sniper scouts, only five man squads. Um, put them out the front and let them take the wounds. I did have two five man squads of scout. This was back in like fourth or fifth edition. I had two uh, five man squads of scouts with sniper rifles and camo cloaks. One squad had a missile launcher. One squad had a heavy whip bolter. That's a really good idea. And yeah. they both had their own land speeder storms. Yep. In, um, it was it, just move them anywhere and then just provide the fire that's needed. Incredible. In um, 10th edition, uh, in the indexes, they had a lone operative, the squads with the snipers, which oh, yeah. meant that... Um, so lone operative is a very powerful keyword. It's one of the strongest in the whole game bar none. It is this unit, nothing cares about it. No, no, no ifs, and or buts cannot be shot at outside of 12. You cannot shoot them at all. So they would just park their butts on a backline objective in no man's land. Sorry, not a backline, in no man's land and say, get right up in my face. And yeah. then you just set up, you go, okay, if I'm going first, I send some units forward and wait and I counter charge you. If you're going first, you have to get really aggressive to stop me from doing that. And if you have to get that aggressive, I find my firing lines and I send the waves down. And if I've got things like my whirlwinds, I've got my thunderfire cannons, which rest in peace, thunderfire cannon. But if you've got those models, your un indirect fire, you know, if you were that kind of person, your desolators, they were blowing things apart. If you're playing competitively, I should say, I don't want to put too much of a stain on them. But if you were playing the more powerful stuff, you know, your desolators with the indirect fire was just wiping on mm -hmm. things off the map. And you'd be like, okay, I owe this unit that went after my scouts to stop you. And Which obviously got a very big powerful. change in the recent data slate thing, right? Very big like, change. Like I know Devastating so. Wounds got a massive change to how it acts in the rules. Yes. Honestly, I feel like the Devastating Wounds change, we, we might get into this one later after we've done with the open reveal, see how long, how much time we've got yeah. going. And I like to get into this, but um, the changes Devastating Wounds does feel like almost a revert because it feels mm -hmm. like what they should have always read mm -hmm. it doesn't a lot of nerfs that have been happening have felt like oh we've actually just like patched this thing and it feels better now but it's not what we wanted originally but now it's better no no this feels like what it should have always been um and in a world where a lot of stuff had feel no pains um against specifically mortal wounds things like the entire custodius faction um things like broadside battle suits specifically against um, mortal wounds they don't feel as strong now that devastating wounds is no longer dealing mortal yeah. wounds but you know, Devastating Wounds in general does still feel as useful as it once did. It's just not as egregious into those big yeah. squads of models. So, yeah. I mean, Scouts are great. We love Scouts. Uh, let's not linger too much. Uh, do we have anything up for Space Marines left? I think we talked about the... Ooh, ooh the Terminator Terminator kit. Incredible. Oh, my gosh. Um, these are a long time coming, obviously. Uh, this is... These were came out in Leviathan first yep. as a monopose kit. This is their multi-part um, multi-pose kit very very exciting so terminators 
We love I them. just like that they're Terminators. They're just Terminators. Yeah. They didn't have to fix them up. They didn't have to modernize them. They just gave them the bigger frames. Um, small details, like the pistons on their legs actually have multiple parts to the actual technology yeah. now. It's not just like a rod that kind yep. of sits around their legs, their thighs. It's now multiple rods that connect into like T-section T joints, which is very interesting. Makes them feel a little bit more real. Yeah, well, they've scaled them up as well, so... Oh, absolutely. Big big legs, uh, strong knees. Um, the same kind of sized heads they always had, but they feel like smaller heads now, which kind of gives you more like a realistic vibe. Um, that is incredible. Yeah. They also talked about how in the lore, uh, pretty well anybody who exists within the Codex of Space Marines or under the, any kind of like Legion or Chapter Flag can get in a Terminator suit now, a Tactical Dreadnought Armor suit. Uh, that's Firstborn, that's Primaris, that's whoever. So some of these upscaled Terminators... Ah, firstborn, which is interesting to think about when Primaris were just rocking like, new gear. Exactly, um, it's interesting because Primaris were meant to be like physically bigger in the law. That's why they were scaled up because they were like, oh, guys, look, they're physically like a foot taller, but all the Terminators are the same height. And then the firstborn are just slapped in there. So maybe they're on like little stilts or something. Yeah, look, little, well like, done, Belisarius Call for coming up with an armor pattern that uh, fits both sizes. Yeah, one size fits all. Belisarius says, one size fits all. So says Mister Call. <laughs> it's all elastic <laughs> it's all elastic yeah actually just bought some new elastic pants really nice ones <laughs> on special too really nice cotton they're like a salmon color moving on <laughs> uh, so uh, some of the other stuff came out Age of Sigma stuff yeah oh heaps of stuff to talk about yeah we're very excited to talk about the Age of Sigma stuff so chug 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 oh my so god so cool oh my gosh so chug king of the Trogos. So those, you know, me playing Age of Sigma, my favorite faction is the Gloom Spike Gits. I have so many different models for the Gloom Spike Gits. Yep. I have basically all of them. Um, I play them in uh, Warcry. I play them in Sigma. I play them wherever I can. Um, I don't really play Orcs. And I, I, I play them in Sigma technically. I play a lot of Cruel Boys, but they're not really my go-to faction. Like, yeah. I don't play them in 40k. Don't, I have Iron Jaws, but they're not necessarily my favorite faction of the Destruction, even though they're quite up there. Um, the the Gloom Spike Gits and the Trogoths particularly. I own 15 Rock Art Trogoths. I have six Fellwater Trogoths. I have two Dankhold Trog bosses. I love my Trogoths. Yeah. So when this reveal came out, I was squealing. I was watching this live and I was squealing. I was like, yes, oh my gosh, he is so cool. So as it's up on the screen right now, this is Trug, King of the Trogoths. And he is oozing with flavor oozing with detail you can see in Just this a casual here, shrine on his back huge shrine on his back he's got this gigantic antlers sprouting out from his head um if you look at his like belly you can actually see that he's got like uh kind of cave paintings yep that have been scarred and etched into his body and the they talked about this law where he was asleep for like so long and he was in such a deep rem sleep right that people like cutting into his stomach and drawing these things and he didn't wake up he didn't even notice it he was just so tunkered out people genuinely thought he was a rock and they were drawing cave paintings on him isn't that so funny they were etching it into his skin and yeah he didn't wake up didn't feel it, it was perfectly I fine. do I do like um, Age of Sigmar's embrace of the weird armies mm -hmm. lately absolutely like putting like I, I, I know that when they shifted to third edition their trogs were like the whole trogoth army thing was kind of like do we, don't we, do we, don't we? And then didn't they release rules for the trog separately as like a, was that? In, yes, you're yeah. absolutely right. So they actually released a, a, a supplement. It was called the Broken Realms. Yep. And within it, they released Glog's Mega Mob, which was like rules for the second edition um, Trogos. At the end of second edition, At the end yeah. of, it was, no, this was in third edition. It was in third but edition. But it was their second edition book. So they oh, hadn't okay. had a new book yet and they were waiting for their new book. And then in the third edition book, they made that official and said, no, Glog's Mega Mob is now in the actual book. Yeah. And then this is going to be coming out with its own set of new rules, which will actually go over a little bit here. So uh, the model's amazing. We love it. It's absolutely incredible. Um, like I said, there's maybe an argument you made for his a little bit of a derivative pose. He's just the kind of guy who's got one AM down, one AM up. That's a pose we've seen a lot for the Trogos, but it's very cool. Um, so Tr Trog, we're not going to open his data sheet yet, but he has 16 wounds. By yep. the way, he's a huge monster. And oh, all the Trogos have an ability that says whenever they, uh, at the beginning of your turn, right, you heal D3 wounds to each Trogoth that's taken any damage. It just happens. You yep. heal D3 wounds. Well, uh, Trog actually heals an additional three flat wounds. So it's three plus D3 he's healing. Jesus Christ. And they haven't announced yet if you can play Glog's Mega Mob, or at least I haven't seen if they've announced that you can play both. But Glog's Mega Mob's ability is that after they fight, they trigger the, the regeneration oh as well. My God. So he'll be able to fight you, heal his 3 plus D3, and then he'll heal again. So this is important. So on his back, he has a, what's called a Lee Stone, right? Or a Lay Stone. And every turn in your hero phase, you actually can choose to clobber it. And he actually like smacks it, and it kind of goes like, boom. And you roll, a D, you roll a D6, right? Well, technically, right? You roll a number of D6 equal to how many wounds he has remaining on a table. So at most, it's four. 
and at least it's one. And you pick one of the results you've rolled and you get that. So for example, if he's on full wounds, you roll four dice and you get to pick one of these results, right? Yeah. On a one, he takes D3 mortal wounds as the glyph <laughs> of... Because this, this has been all over the realms, this Lee Stone, right? Actually, it connects to all the realms. Yeah, yeah. So that's the realm of Shaiish, the realm of death. In the glyph of Gur on a two, he gets plus one to the attacks characteristics of his melee weapons. And he does D6 damage with four attacks on his big club, which is huge. It's a bit swinging for D6 damage, but it's huge. Getting extra attack on that is amazing, It's huge. It's, it's, it's just, it's a, it's a monster and a, and a hero killer. Exactly. And, it, but, and he is also a monster and a hero, which is just so good for the game as well. Well, mate, sorry, the game benefits him a lot. Um, that's the Gur, that's like the, the realm of beasts. The Realm of Fire and Soot, actually. This improves the rend of his melee weapons by one, which against certain ties would be very, very good. What are they already now? Like minus um, two? I think he's on minus two, yeah. So yeah. it goes up to minus three, which is incredible. We're actually going to get to that in a second. What's that so good? The Glyph of Hish, which is the Realm of Light, I think Hish mm -hmm. is. Um, roll a dice each time this unit receives a command. On a two plus, you receive a command point. So that was free. Yeah, so you just refund. That was yeah. epic. That was free. And there, there's like really cool stuff where a Trog boss, for example, it can have an upgrade. Uh, a, a relic or maybe no it's a command trait sorry you can have a command trait where he can hand out a command to two separate Trogoth units instead of one you pay the CP for both but maybe you don't mm -hmm. and every time he hands out all out attack which is plus one to hit to a Trogoth unit he gives him additionally plus one attacks characteristic so that could be plus one attacks and plus one to hit and you, and get you cost nothing. Yeah. And you get that one refund. Isn't that crazy? That's followed up by the Glyph of Ulgu, which is the Glyph of Sha uh, the Realm of Shadows. Only unmodified hit rolls of six for attacks made with missile weapons score a hit. Ugh. They have to snap fire at you. Isn't that crazy? And finally, the Glyph of Carmon, which is the Realm of Metal. Lore of Metal. This unit has a ward of five plus. That which Glyph is of good. Ulgu is just so like anti Karadron, I love it. It's so good. I mean, and we spoke of um, Lumineth before. Yeah, the Lumineth. Very good against Lumineth. It's good against the new cities of Sigma, which is probably where I think the most is. Yeah, been yeah, definitely. Um, but it's very, well, very good. Well, that's the whole point of the Dawnbringer Chronicles that they're doing anyway. Is that's like, my, yeah. The, like the revitalization of the cities of Sigma. Exactly. And that's epic, right? So, uh, and look at that amazing art. Just such cool art of him. And he's roaring. And you can see that's the Akshi activating in his back, the Leelite on his back, roaring with flame and invigorating everyone around him, but also destroying all the people in front of him. You can see those rock guards in the background holding up their rocks. Speaking of invigorating his allies, let's scroll a little bit further down and talk about the aura of Haywire Magic, right? At the start of your hero phase, this is if you're part of his Trog Herd, which is why I mm -hmm. don't know if Glog's Mega Mob will be something you can play as, but Trog's Trog Herd is at the start of your hero phase, if you use a friendly Trog's malfunctioning Lee Stone ability, the effect you pick applies to all other friendly Trog Herd units. Until the start of your next hero phase. That means your whole army can't be shot except on six. I, your whole army is a water My favorite up. thing, though, is I love that you could mess this up so bad that you just do D3 mortal wounds to your, to whole, every, to your whole army. <laughs> to your whole army. Uh, this is a regiment of renown, isn't it? Um, I actually don't know if it's a regiment of renown. Um, it might be a... It might be a... Like a supplement. I don't know if it's a regiment. Uh, it's an army of renown. It's, it's an army of renown. renown. No, it's, that's not a regiment of renown. Yeah. Those are two very different things. So a regiment of renown is like a small group of people you can add to any faction. An army of renown is new rules that say you can only bring specific models to your faction and you get these rules. So what an army of renown says is you play loose by gits, you can no longer bring squigs or grots. And then you unlock these rules. Whereas a regiment of renown is like, if you're playing grots, you can bring cruel boys and bring some of their bow guys because you're yeah, destruction. And just put them in the corner. And put them in the corner. And they get their own rules and such. But I, th if it's an army of renown, yeah, it's quite different. Army of renown is a term that actually comes from 40K. It's interesting that it's coming into Sigma. But basically, yeah, it's saying, this is your whole faction gets this benefit. It doesn't get to go into any other army. Did they take it out of 40K? They did take it out of 40K. Yeah. <laughs> so they've taken it away from 40K. They've kind of swapped some stuff around, it looks like. But yes, that's what an army of renown is. I could be wrong. And this could be like just them kind of saying something that kind of means regiment renown. It could be regiment renown. I don't think it is. However, I think it's an army. It is like full on a faction. So, Well, how many guys are in there? Like it's what, six trogs and trog himself? Like, I think that's all that is. Yeah. But that's I'm, I'm pretty sure that's a solid point cost. I was going to say, because he's like 360 points. Trog yeah. alone. So I... And most regiments, I think, are at the 300 point margin. So, um, and then here's their command trait. Oh yeah, he just adds one. Yeah, when you roll the dice that determines the number of wounds you can heal with a friendly trog herd unit's regeneration or greater regeneration, add one to the number of wounds you can heal. But it says that's a command trait, which is interesting. So you put that on your general, and then as long as they're around, you get that benefit. As which is well. assuming that would be trog, right? Um, yes, but because he's a 
because he is a like um, named character, you can't have a command trait. Mm. So you would assume so, but I think that's going to oh, Dankold Trogboss. So, yeah, you need a Dankold Trogboss. Yes, you would bring along a couple As of your things. warlord. Yep, and then an artifact gives you, and this is where it comes back into why it's an army of renown and not a regiment of renown, is that it's giving you things like command traits and artifacts power, which you don't normally get. So the Thwack Weezer Club, Thwack Weezer, how sick is that? Subtract one from hit rolls and wound rolls will attack the target the bearer if they have been picked to fight in the same phase. So if you fight first, cool. Everything's minus one to hit and wound you. If they have been picked to fight in this. Subtract one from hit rolls and wound rolls for attacks that target the bearer, the bearer if, if they, they have, have been, been to picked fight. to fight in the same phase. So you phase. charge into them with your, come up with your general, yeah. you fight with it, and then if they try to fight you back, it's minus one hit and wound. The, sorry, yeah. The word, the wording is like blowing it's a bit my, weird. It's, it's very weird, weird. But yeah, you fight. They try to fight you back. Minus one to hit and to wound. And I reckon that because it is part of the clues by gifts, you will still have this the bad moon. Yeah. And if you're under the light of the bad moon, all trogos get plus one to their save. And rock guts have a four up save with so having the dank hold. So it's a three up save. You got to get through. You're minus one to hit. Minus one to wound. He's healing wounds back. It's just a good model. It's just a great <laughs> model with a great faction, it looks like. So I'm very excited. I will be buying this on release. Um, I will be playing this nonstop. Yeah, I don't I don't need trogs. Right. <laughs> I don't need trogs. I don't need trogs. I don't need trogs. Trog, 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 trog. Maybe. <laughs> so um, <laughs> that's it. I'm ordering 15. <laughs> so um, I've actually like recently because I've been playing a lot of Warcry with the gang. We'll actually talk about that game in a second. Playing a lot of Warcry. Um, I'm playing the Gloom Spike Gits as part of a Gnarlwood Rumble we're doing in the store yep, soon. Yep. I organized something in November. It's a cool event. Um, we haven't done an event for Warcry yet. Um, I've been running. I ran a small narrative thing and then I've been doing like games every Thursday here at Vault. Um, every Thursday evening with a bunch of guys. Our group's been growing from like just two or three guys to like five guys. Now we have a consistent maybe eight, six to eight guys. And I've got two new guys guys coming to learn the game tonight straight after this recording so that's gonna be very exciting too just dating when we're doing this but whatever um very exciting so uh point being is i'm playing the glues by gets in the event which i'm very excited for painting them up as best i can and making them look really nice and i've been kit bashing my own little trogol so i've got a rock gut and i've like cut his face and his nose and i put like a little i found a wooden like orc face thing and i cut away the, the shield and put that on his thing like a mask and sky to the side and um i've taken the club of a man crusher giant that has like the classic one from fantasy where has all the swords and like axes stuck into it and i've glued that to his so he's got like all these swords and axes and stuff and he's got like the mask on and yeah i gave him a cool little base and such and um i even got a flag from the iron jaws um no sorry from the um what are they called the 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 stabbers squad from the gods i took one of their banners and then i cut away that and put it as a bib so he's got like oh, a yeah. bib that's like this big glue spike gets bib so just i'm taking a lot, I had a lot of fun with this so i'm really in the trug off like mindset i'm really trugging it out right now so well with more destruction stuff obviously too we got the whole bunch of new iron jaws stuff coming land on rx second ago this is so exciting and we might as well start with zogrok anvil, anvil smasher. smasher so i just like the squig cool the squig that's clonk Clonk, clonk, the squig. Elvis, clonk, 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 clonk. clonk. It's the El it's Elvis squig right there. Yes, yeah. So clonk is a living anvil mm -hmm. that Zogrok will actually like smith weapons against. That's why he's so grumpy because he has to be smithed against all the time, and that's why he has that flat top to his head because Zogrok will literally smith. And you can see his his blade that he's holding is so like imbued with that flame. It's so hot mm -hmm. from being currently. It's like he's always working on it. It's actually so hot that he'll have rules that say when he hits you with it, he'll actually remove your ward save. Oh, good. If he hits you with it, which is absolutely Because everything's incredible. getting ward now. Everything's getting wards. I mean, you know, it's an after save. Games can have it. But it's the, the ability to remove that is very, very useful, especially in an army that doesn't really have ways to do that. You know, cruel boys will just throw like darks on you and such and do that. And, oh, I didn't notice he has other weapon options. That's really cool too. So maybe the other weapon option actually won't remove your ward. That's really interesting. Maybe we'll do something just more. Just tongs. Just tongs. But I love the idea of having the, the like kind of hammer and the tongs mm -hmm. and whatever it is. You know, he's always got that very like blacksmithy vibe. He's very cool. And he's got like a burning furnace on his butt. God, that would hurt. Oh my gosh. He farted in he the fire. In it. <laughs> He's in, it's incredible. Look, it's oozing with character. Yeah, Iron I love Jaws it. are always oozing with character. Um, we've got the Brute Rages. Yeah, oh, this is the God. greatest. I think this is one of the best refreshes I've seen for like for a model range. Yes, incredible. Um, so these guys are a two option kit. There's the Brute Rages and yep. there's, we'll get to the next one in a second. It's like the weird 
yeah. the weird something. We'll get to those. Um, the Brute Rages is really cool. So I was talking about this earlier. They talked about this on the stream and they said, the law for the Brute Rages, right, is that brutes are like the biggest, baddest orcs in camp, right? And they'll waltz around camp. They'll be like, I can stop the toe of a tree and, oh, I could, I could arm wrestle a giant and, you know, I could take down a whole Sigmarite stronghold on just my own. And every so often, an orc will like look at him and be like, oh, you get, you can't do that. You're a liar. And then brutes are like so, so full of themselves. They're like, yeah, I can. And they'll go test it. They'll go and do it. And sometimes they'll get their arm like broken by a giant because obviously they'll go wrestle a giant. Sometimes they'll run away from a Sigma Rai stronghold as they get peppered with bullets, right? And when they do that, they actually get like so like genuinely embarrassed and so like worked up by the fact that they're not worthy of being an orc that they'll actually shred their armor down and almost akin to the old dragon slayers from fantasy lore they'll shred down to basically as you can see just their undies and they'll charge into battle first and what happens is to the, get through the shame yeah and then gork will actually like empower them as they're rushing into battle and then like because it's like oh from his like like perspective there's like the coolest orcs. Mm -hmm. So he's like comparing them and then they'll run in and start killing and swaying everyone. But they are the first in the battle. They are the first to die and they are the brute rages. So I think there's a lot of cool lore in there. And that same character you can see oozing from these guys. They're very cool. They've got the very modern orc aesthetic, but they can always also come back to that kind of classic stuff. They almost remind me a bit of savage orcs, like your mm -hmm. bone splitters, but in an Iron Jaws vibe, which is exactly what you want. That nice brutish character. Yeah, I've, uh, I've noticed what this new release is as well. This the design language of Iron Jaws, they are sort of slowly starting to fuse like bone splitters in with a bit of that Iron Jaws madness, like as we'll see with the next models. But uh, just on the side, the the model on the left, I love that hook in the end of the gore chopper there. So cool. 100%. 100%. I think it's great. I think it's absolutely brilliant. So um, they're great models. And the next one are the Weird Brute Wreckers. So as you can kind of tell with the kind of already, look at the poses. Mm. They do have close poses um, because obviously they're like parts of two, uh, parts of the same kit, sorry. Um, and I think these are great. Again, oozing with character. I love the the bottom left is actually my favorite here. He's got a very like Moria orc vibe, yeah, like yeah. Urukai kind of vibe with his helmet going on. I love the skulls, but that's kind of my personal favorite. So I like the idea of these guys kind of remind me as well of um, goblin, like Grot fanatics. Yeah. They swing around their big like things. But as you can see on a brute, that same wrecking ball is, is puny. Yeah, it's a little yeah. like little ball on a chain, and it just looks so great. So I think again, these guys have really like knocked out of the park. I love it. The please tell me, what, is the next one the best one? Not oh, quite. No. Well, actually, these, you know, I would these say these are pretty good. I would say this is definitely the top two. So it's I, it's almost like gone in higher, higher quality. Yeah. Than through. So this, um, these models may look familiar. These are the Ard Boys. Yeah. So, so Ard this Boys. is the refresh of the Ard Boy range, which are used to be what the Black Orcs. Black Orcs, the Blorks from um, Warhammer Fantasy. So they finally given the Iron Jaws their own um, battle line unit, their own kind of mainstay. Now, uh, technically, brutes are battle line. But again, this is like their go-to kind of just like fill out the field. So these are great. Their model's incredible. They're much larger, as you can already tell. There's a lot more girth to them. They feel like the Black Orcs actually from Blood Bowl. Yeah. Where they're really I'm actually girthy. noticing a lot of... Um a lot of face masks that come from Blood Bowl. Yeah, exactly. So, but that's, you know, that's the modernization of it. I think it's perfect. Um, and for me, uh, there's another rule that's been talked about. These guys, they actually, I haven't looked over their new rules just yet, but these guys have a three plus save now. <gasps> so they are as armored as a Stormcast freaking Eternal with that, uh, with that armor there. And the fun fact for Iron Draws, if you don't know as well, and this is the uh, irony of having a blacksmith, is that how they make their armor and why it looks the way it does is they actually just like punch the metal sheets and they literally just go doo, 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 and they just punch them into the shapes they want and they get their teeth and they run their teeth along like the edges of the metal to sharpen it and that's how they make their armor from big sheets of metal they just like punch into it and make what they want because they're that strong and they'll bend it with their strong forearms and such and yeah a whole army that makes its own armor yeah whole army and that's that's why these armor is also all so unique on each model because they make their own yeah and they i love it, it. i choice. love i love the new refresh um there wasn't a lot wrong with the original models either. Like they were probably some of the later, I think they were some of the later Warhammer Fantasy models. Maybe. Um, so the models still came across quite well. I think had, they did, yeah. Had enough character in them as well. But these are like a whole nother step. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm very interested to see what the rules look like because I am an Iron Jaws player. I, my army consists of like four squads of Ard Boys. Uh, Gore Grunters. Yeah, two squads of Gore Grunters. Um, one, uh, no, two of the... 
uh, uh, weird knob shamans, or do you mean the no, uh, no, war no. chanters? The war chanters, two war chanters, and a mega boss on more grun- on more crusher. Yeah, tell me you bought two star collecting boxes <laughs> without telling me. Without telling me, yeah, <laughs> and a more grunter, of course. <laughs> Lol, uh, uh, it was three. It was uh, like three. <laughs> yeah, it was like three. Um, so yeah, incredible. I also want to say as well with these guys that um, I think that while the black orcs to kind of maybe put a little bit of like a lamp on them, I think that. The way the old Black Orcs looked, they were so scrawny. I mean, they're still Orcs, they're still strong, yeah, yeah. but they were so scrawny compared to Brutes. They made Brutes look like gargantuan. Yeah. Like Brutes were like these really different models. So I think the Ard Boys and the Brutes kind of blend together just a little bit. Um, but as Connor's actually like landed on here, the there's a free, already released, which I have to go through myself now. Yeah, Watch I, me be an I Iron Jaws player after I've said I don't really play much Orcs. Um, full Iron Jaws now. But the PDF is free online. So it's already come out as a time of this recording and I'll be going over tonight and it, it's going to be very exciting. So I will be giving it a deep look as well because um, my my wife, Jenna, actually plays Daughters of Cain a lot. Yeah. Um, big fan of Daughters of Cain. So every now and then, you know, we'll whip out a, the mats at home and, and have a game. And uh, since third edition, I've kind of been smoking her a little. Yeah. Because <laughs> of just how fast the Gore Grunters are and the more Crusher is to get on the other side of the field. Yeah. Well, spoilers, Connor. Let's go to the last model first and then we'll come back to this page here. But we've got one last model to talk about. I don't think there's another model in here, is there? No. No? Oh, it's because it was previewed earlier. I guess we'll go yeah. to here. All right. So thank you, Connor. My apologies then. Um, here we have the new, and this was kind of already announced, but the more Grunter. Yes. So we love big, the naming conventions pig, of the Iron Jaws. Big, we have pig. the pig. The pig riders are the Gore Grunters. Yep. The dragon riders are the more Crushers. Yes. But the big pig... That's the more grunter. More grunter, yeah. So it's got a get, big mouth like a more crusher and it runs as fast as a gore grunter. What are we going to call it, boys? More, more grunter. grunter. Exactly. Incredible model. This is my personal favorite model. It, this was announced in April. Yep. Yeah. Um, and in April, it won my best model. It was like, this is the best model of the whole range. I don't care yeah, about anything else. I don't care. I don't There's care. Nothing Leviathan, else this year. It doesn't matter. I think Leviathan showed off actually all of the Tyranids at that point in time. Or maybe it was around the Tyranids release, something along those lines. And I still remember going... Big I don't pig. care. Big, big pig. pig. This is incredible. And it's just oozing flavor. Again, three different brutes, two hang off the side and one hang, sits on the top as well. Just Well, that's awesome just one of the builds models. for it. Yeah. One of the one of the builds for it is like you have like essentially a mobile battle station. Yeah. And the other build is just one guy hanging on for dear life. <laughs> and I think the one guy is the hero unit. Yeah. Right? Because you got the battle station, which is like basically that's your... See, there they are there. That's your three guys. You know, that's your uh, big tank unit that's going to do tons of damage run around the board to be hard to kill and you got the character that sits on it which is going to be handing out commands um, big totem range of 18 if it's your general as well probably just had the totem keyword to be fully honest uh, I don't know yet but uh, yeah big 18 inch range handing out the kind of buffs you want them to hand out probably cares about more grunters as well and probably gore grunters um, so they're just incredible look at these models here as well they just again ooze the same character you want to see from the iron jaws which is they are a wave that are uh, totally unstoppable force iron jaws are both at the same time unstoppable mo- force sorry and immovable, immovable object, object yeah. they're both these things at all times so I think the iron jaws are just some of the most char- like, characterful and interesting kind of factions out there and this only adds that range and kind of curves out the edges i think you landed saying earlier that the black orcs fit the range still and i think that there's probably argument to me in that yeah. i think they're great but again i could see why people want them changed the gore grunters though definitely hold up oh the gore absolutely. grunters are a very very modern unit because they were i think in eighth edition released maybe seventh in fantasy and the gore grunters today are just fit right in they're perfect so they're perfect so seeing them next to the more grunters as well they don't look out of place they look great the army's well awesome. the great thing is there is apparently an army of renown that allows you to take a more grunter as your leader and then you can just have more grunters and gore grunters. Amazing. Oh my God. Because that, that's that. actually what my original build was back in second edition yep. uh, when they had the um, battalion, War Scroll Battalions. My, one of my War Scroll Battalions was just a gore grunter horde and the other one was just an Ard Boys horde. Yep, yep. So my gore grunter horde was like, I'm going to move this six inches before we start the game. And then now I'm just going to run you over. Exactly. And you I, have one guy as the big boss. Exactly. I think that, um, and you can still do that, right? Because you have the command ability in your core army now. Yeah. Where in they the Iron Jaws core army, yeah. They use their full movement as well, which is quite nice. But again, you know, second edition to third edition Age of Sigma did have that kind of startling change where War Scroll Battalions were no longer uh, match play legal. Um, but again, you know, War Scroll Battalions in the second edition cost points and then you're paying those points for that premium. And it was very hard for them, I think, to balance because they also represented like- They got how special you, abilities. They got special abilities, but importantly as well, they were all a single drop every single time. Yeah. So they kind I went okay well you had to put things into war scroll battalions and those that had the really big ones kind of had the better ones because and if they were valid because you'd be the single drop whereas now every army can just bring a unified 
battalion. And those core battalions, while they make the game more competitively viable, I still think you lose some of that flavor. Yeah. Um, even though, and you know, you can scream all you like, you know, oh, but Warscore Battalions still exist. It's like Legends models. You know, Warscore Battalions still exist. It's like, yeah, but if they're not match play legal, you they're won't see them as much as you will a normal kind of. I, um, yeah, that's the big thing for me. Now, this rule, I read this last night. Oh, go back down. Yeah, there we go. This rule I love about the Maul Grunters. Unstoppable momentum. It, I haven't read this, so go ahead. So, unstoppable momentum is every time you advance, or so you run, sorry, or make a charge move, you roll a d3 and you add it to its momentum score. The momentum score can sit anywhere between one and six. Based on where that momentum score is, they get changes to their rules. Their movement goes up. Their rend on their kill cho- on the armies on the um the the mounted guys kill choppers goes up because they're moving so fast. And the mighty tusks damage goes up by plus one um, for each line in this table. Right, okay. and at the end of every turn, your momentum goes down by one. So you're incentivized to keep that up and constantly moving and charging, because that Incredible. is a problem with the Gore Grunters right now. In in the in the way the game works, is I will run them up, and they will just stay there until they kill whatever's in front of them, or they get killed, and yep. then I'll get to charge them again, which is really frustrating because a lot of their effects are really based on that charge, yep. and there's no real way to retreat them out and charge on the same turn, which makes it a really like it's like a bad offer for me. Like, interesting I, yeah. I offer this trade uh, you retreat and you can't do any combat this turn or you can just probably kill these guys this turn what do you want to do and it's like oh, I'll just kill them and it's good now because it's also like they don't feel that much stronger on the charge than they would just normally yeah so it's like in that kind of they have to make them balanced and in that long term battle they're kind of not like winning down much so now it's like if you could lock down the boys you are actually going to be yeah. willing down their value is, as yeah, well yeah there is a tactic yeah defensively that, yeah. that so I think would actually help a lot of the armies like just talking from my experience, the way that the army runs against the daughters of Cain, my wife's daughters of Cain, is my gore grunters and and any other things that go in for the charge, they go in, they do some damage, and if I don't kill that squad, they're there for a turn or two. Yep, um, definitely. And it just goes a bit back and forth. A lot of times, I actually lose my gore grunters to um, a, a 20 blob uh, Sisters of Slaughter. Yeah, that makes sense. Because makes sense. that... that six on the save doing wounds back to me makes it really hard to maintain um like maintain your guys there and if i had to retreat out and then charge again like that's three turns essentially that exactly if i can survive that second if i can survive that first turn of the saves then I can probably whittle off enough units to have them run away, enough models to have them run away at the end of the next turn. Assuming they're not like popping the inspiring bravery, yeah, of course, uh, right? Assuming, yeah. But I, so, think the, I think to make reference as well, we talk about it from a defense standpoint, but offensively as well, you know, you're just getting benefits for charging, so you're yeah. more likely to just wipe the squad, mm-hmm. honestly, right? So, uh, so and then headlong charger, which is this is the pivotal rule. This is the um, big one. So, is this applying just to the more grunter? Yes. Okay, so it's so, a more grunter, but as long as its momentum score is four or more, it can charge even though it ran earlier yes. in the turn. But it only gets D3 momentum each time it runs, correct? Yes. So you so can't get this turn one. You can. Oh. Because everything starts with a momentum score of one. Okay, but you'd have to get a three. You have to get a five or a six on the dice. Yes, to a get five that. or a six on the dice. So you'd have to get pretty lucky to get this, but you could get it turn one. Of and course, you know what? You know what? One. If you're playing Iron Jaws... You always risk it for the biscuit, baby. You're gonna roll the dice. Oh, I'm gonna roll that dice. Gonna roll that dice. I'm gonna run that more grunter, That's and cool. I'm gonna get that. F- I'm gonna get that five. I'm gonna be like, <laughs> you're gonna get that one, and you're gonna be like, this game sucks. I don't this know why I play man. and charge with my gore grunters anyway because they're already there. They're already there. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, look how cool those big pigs are, and they're just so menacing. God, I love myself a large centerpiece model, but I also kind of just like, like I kind of mess with the beast raiders from um, the ogres, yes. where they all walk around those like uh, the the frost the horns. thunder tu- the frost horn and the thunder tusks. I think they're just absolutely brilliant models. So this is definitely feeling that vibe for me. So I am one hundred percent buying these models. Yeah, I look, there's a part of me that's like, do I just get like two or three of these and then just pivot to um like a more crusher, a bunch of more grunters and gore grunters? Yeah, I think you do. I mean, that's what I'm doing. I don't, I don't even own any gore grunters currently. So. Um, so it says here, uh, can you scroll down sorry, a little bit, Connor? So Dawnbringer's Book 2, Reign of the Brute, also provides rules for the Grunter Stampede, an entire army of renown that revolves around hogs of war, both big and small, with a buffet of unique enhancements and legions abilities. Riotous chants of, here we come, rile up your orcs to create an unstoppable surge of momentum, giving you an early start as your more grunting units avoid losing momentum in the first turn, yep. which is during that first battle round, do not subtract one for the momentum score of friendly more grunting units at the end of each turn. Ooh, okay. So if you get that up to like 
three or f- three or four at that in that first turn, and you maintain that for the next turn. That's just that's insane. That's insane. So you're going to be like, okay, I run. If I didn't get in charge range next turn, I will run and charge. Yeah, and well, and even if you manage to make that, you do that run and you get that five or six, getting your momentum up to four. Well, you just you're pretty much going to be at six. Incredible when you're in when you start your fight phase. Yeah, incredible. That's really good. It's like highly likely to be sitting there at a six. Yeah, that's it's, really uh, good because you also get it on the charge, of course, as well. Yeah, yeah. So you are gonna yeah. Very so you run in charge. Six. Well, guess what? You're getting that momentum up every time. That's so strong. That's that so actually. Strong. The, honestly, this is the first time I feel like a model in Age of Sigma reflects total war warhammer <laughs> yeah where you've got those big guys just running into the squads of dudes and they're all like, flinging <laughs> out from the physics engine incredible this is the first time i actually feel like this is happening in age of sigma yep yep i like that i like that maybe in um the old world as we'll also get into just a little bit of um maybe at some point you know those rules also reflect that a bit too because it is based on old world of course so um what do we have next on the plate is it going to be the war cry reveals oh, oh, what's, yeah. sorry this is a skip ahead what's the though we want these guys yeah, right? yeah the new, the new box so the new box this is for Warhammer Age of Sigma, but more importantly, it's for Warcry, Warcry which is the, the skirmish, skirmish game. game they make for this. This is a game that Connor and I hold very close to our hearts. We love this game a lot. We play a ton of it. Like I said, I'm running an event for it. We love it so much. Uh, Warcry is a very easy to play, very easy to learn, kind of hard to mm-hmm. master, but really, I wouldn't even say that hard to master compared to most games. I, very- played, a, I played a lot of the first edition. I know it's mm-hmm. not second edition. It's like revised now and rather than being second edition. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I played a lot of that first era where it was just Chaos Cults. Yep. Um, big fan of the Iron Golems. They're my great. boys. The Iron Golems are awesome. They still um, see play today. We've got a guy, Andrew, who plays his Iron Golems and having a 4-8 damage on the actual yep. Crusher itself, the Ogre, is insane. Yeah, the Ogre Breacher. What a unit. Um, yeah, love a lot of Warcry. And uh, it's only getting better with all these new releases, new bespoke war bands, everything. Like, especially these models. Like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. All the destruction love at the moment is making me a very happy boy. So this is where I was at with um, the Cruel Boys as well. There's like a new Cruel Boys thing coming out very soon, which has like these bigger mandrel, like baboon in there. Yep. And they're like that beast tamer kind of Cruel Boys. Um, it's like, you say destruction and I agree totally with destruction, but I just mean just non-chaos. Because with Warcry 1, the one thing that kept me away from that game was those bespoke factions were like all chaos. all chaos. And they weren't just all chaos. They were all chaos cultists. And yeah. they were all just kind of like shirtless angry dudes yeah. in some way shape or form and when you bring them into age of sigma they're pretty much just all shitty chaos and they're bad models yeah. in age of sigma unfortunately and even today some of them are still pretty rubbish in age of sigma which is like i think it's fine to have bad models because it is a casual game and we talk about that a lot but it's more casual than 40k is you know what i mean but um like you know when you have good models from these kind of games good units like for example the absolution squad from kill team that moved into 40k as a 35 point five-man unit and was auto included in every imperial army that had to get nerfed to 110 points for 10 and it's minimum 10 now so it's not very useful at all you know and that's still at 11 points a model you you know it takes over the whole game yeah so they have to be very careful with that and i do understand that but again i just don't care for the aesthetic of dudes in shirts and you know the second faction of this box we'll get into in a second don't do it for me um and that's just personal and it's totally subjective but these gorges these classic ogor yeah. famished gorges the whole thing with I, these guys is they oh sorry i honestly thought they were death at first when i first saw this they kind of have a vibe don't they well the whole thing right is why they're so pale right and why they're so kind of slender for ogors is that they have a curse when they eat food if it's, they swallow it they cough it back up as ash and oh. that's why they're always so hungry and they're always covered in blood around their mouths because, you know, they're always gorging on food because they're so hungry and they're permanently like lost to suffer in that respect. And that's why they're screaming and so ravenous and they've lost their minds because, uh, yeah, they've been, every time they eat food, they cough it up as ashes, which is just terrible if you can imagine that. That's the worst thing ever. But oozing with flavor, great models. One more over Connor, the guy we started with. This guy right here, actually, no, he wasn't, but either way, this guy here is actually the original pose of the very first Gorger model. Yeah. Um, I was a kid in 2009. I used to have the soft cover Citadel catalog. I remember those catalogs they used to do and the old Gorge was in that. It was one the it was the one model in the Ogors. At the, then it was the Ogre Kingdoms from Fantasy back then. And it was the one model I was like, ah, if I can have a whole army of these guys and the Yetis, I hope they do Yetis eventually. But anyway, these guys, I would love that. And now you can, in Warcry at least, play Gorges as a whole faction. And you could get three of these units for Age of Sigma because they will have rules eventually for Age of Sigma. So you could bring three of these units in your Ogre Kingdoms. But again, in your Ogre More Tribe, sorry. But yeah, these guys are incredible. They're great models. They're going to have lots of wounds, obviously. Mm-hmm. There's only five models in your Warband. They're going to have pretty good movement, I assume, probably in the five to six range, which is just pretty good. That's about Stormcast or something like that. Um, hopefully, they're not in the four range or the three like your um, Iron Jaws. Um, we know we hate that here. Um, 
So hopefully they have good mo movement. They probably have like very aggressive abilities, things like being able to move after they kill someone or being able to like destroy, kill an enemy unit. Or maybe they'll be able to attack multiple times and make sure they kill enemy units. Maybe they'll heal when they do that kind of stuff. Who knows what happens, but they're just oozing with labor. Great models. I dig it. I dig it. You know what? I think we're, I think we're going to be um, against each other on this one though. We are. I absolutely love what they're doing to Cities of Sigmar. Yes. I, look, I, I don't want to say that... I don't want to say that CC might look bad. These models are amazing. And I know people are going to go crazy for just the little guy, but that's just not my, not my thing, you know? I think, I think these are fantastic. I think the, the aesthetic into almost like Grim, hmm, hmm. Um, <laughs> Grim fairy tale, like City of Sigma. Look, plenty of dogs. We love the dogs. Love a good warhound. Um, is, that, is that a knife in his mouth? Or is there something? Else? Is he done? Is he like holding a knife? No, no, he's no. Just got a padlock on his neck, on his um, on his collar. Oh, okay. It's like swinging out to the side. That's all. Oh, it's a spike, mate. Oh, yeah, he's no, got spikes. spike collars. He's got a spike yeah. collar. Uh, it's a little bit far away from you guys. <laughs> yeah. Those are um, I think these. I think these are fantastic because they they ooze the flavor of the new cities of Sigma. I mean, speaking of cities of Sigma, we've got the whole new army box that just came out recently. Absolutely, with the new codex in there. Yeah, Battle I Time, definitely sorry. don't need that. I'm. I don't need that. I keep telling myself I don't need it. I've got enough at home that I'm still trying to paint, but... Uh. As, a, as a Tau Empire player in 40k, I talk about me being the pivotal shooting faction, and I'm like, in a game where everyone shoots each other. But Cities of Sigma has so much shooting. It is such a gunline army when you actually put it together. And for me, it's like, in a game where you want to slam models into each other in a charge phase and a following fight phase, like, Sigma doesn't do it for me. Well, that's, that's one of the things why I'm enjoying the Cities of Sigma refresh, because a chunk of it is, I think, moving that gunline to a mid-range. Hmm rather than the long range that it used to be. Yeah. Um, which is fine because they're kind of reserving mid to long for Karadrin, which we'll perfectly see we, fine for. Yeah, we'll see what we do with Karadrin as well because they are definitely an army that could use a rules refresh. But um, yeah. but, but yeah, I'm I'm enjoying this this new series of Sigma. Is that the new Morpot? That's the new Morpot right there. <laughs> it's Tell me you're level. colored with contrast. Yeah. Oh, it's it's an incredible model. I think the new Morpot looks great. I think obviously the old one has a very cool like butcher's pot vibe but this is very much goes to their current rule their current law of like feeding an infinitely hungry beast like feeding yeah. this kind of eldritch abomination beast it's like this big sarlacc pit that they're dropping like flesh into and that big upside down skull you can see like uh, an ogre kind of chieftain or some kind of like um witch walking up onto that you know the music's playing the drum beats are going and they're holding up the the gory mess and they're all chanting as they throw it into the pot and the freaking fire comes up as the as like the belly of the beast kind of burps it back up almost like there's yeah, so it much it, it's excitement. less about feeding the masses and more about feeding whatever's controlling them or giving them like their abilities. Exactly. Yeah, they're 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 constantly enslaved by this kind of almost mad star god, and they have to keep feeding it to the constant flesh. So, yeah, that's just very cool. And again, the hunter and the hunter is going to be a new warband tome coming out. That's not just going to have their rules. It'll it's have, have like, like yeah, missions and stuff. Near missions, narrative stuff, cool stuff. So. I like it. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm also a big fan of these new models. Yeah, so this wasn't oh. announced as part of the Nova Open, but this is a new Warcry Warband announced only the other day. What, like yesterday or the day before? Um, and these are the new Fire Slayers, and these guys are super cool. I have a soft spot in my heart for dwarves. I always have. I always will. Um, and as a kid, I used to have the Battle for Skull Pass, and my favorite model that I had was the one little Dragon Slayer you got yeah. in the Battle for Skull Pass. And there was also that mission where you actually got a model, but he was tied up. And you had to go save him. When you saved him, you replaced him with like the actual fire slayer model, which is such a cool little thing. And the little magma worm or whatever they call yep. it, the little baby magma worm. Ma no, the magma is the big dragon. They've got a name for this guy. Oh, okay. He's got I thought it was just a baby magma like It a is a baby magma or whatever. He's got a, yeah, he's got a name, but it's like, oh. I think they named something else a little bit, but he's a little baby magma So very cool. This is great. This is a refresh that fire slayers sorely need. Yeah. That what are they? Like four, four unit boxes, I think maybe five. In total, out of the whole army, yeah, there's like there's like five or six, including heroes. It's like six it, or something, in, including their terrain piece, yeah, their rune uh, yeah, for, their guess, rune forge. Yeah, I guess also the rune forge. Also, another big inclusion is uh, we finally have female Duarden models. Yes, that actually is big, huge, hugely valid. I think that's awesome. I'm a huge fan of obviously that kind of representation in media, and especially in, in Warhammer, where. You know, you talk, we, that kind of conversation yeah. does come up often. Uh, the idea of female representation in Warhammer, and it's just amazing. Um, and I think it's great, especially putting them on the front lines. You can imagine a, uh, a female fire slayer, any kind of fire slayer, always having that same vibe of just like, we want to get involved, we want to kill, uh, we want to we fight for glory. 
and for our rune father and um what is this and it's a, and assuming that grudges are like a single gender only is incorrect <laughs> yeah look at this little guy look at uh, that I big love guy. That guy i love it with the two eggs on his shoulders yeah. he's like harboring the baby i'm gonna make magma more dolls. so cool i love that little magma droth too he's so cool he's so cool again just a cute little guy and I think there's something he said about like having cute little guys in your yeah. faction. You know, like the um, like the lizard men had the little birds. Uh, sorry, the ter- like pterodons. Um, you've got the doggos in the cities of Sigma. You've got um, Dune Claw. The yep, the little Dune Claw from um from Underworlds. The the crab. Um, and obviously now you've got this little magma droth and such like that. So it's really cool. Like even the mandrels from the cruel boys feel that kind of way. There's even like a little um, there's a little grot that's carrying around a big egg as well. Yeah. In the um, you don't even know what the creature is for. Uh, for the cruel boys. So there's a cool stuff, and we'll actually see that again. I do dig that leader too. Oh, he's so cool. We'll see that again now as we move into the Underworlds models. Yeah. And talk about the new release, Death, the Gorge. Death Gorge, which is very, very exciting. First of all, Ideneth, dope. Dope models, great theme. But let's get, get straight to the elephant in the room here. Let's get straight to the important model, Connor. We're going straight to this. I want to talk about it. Let's skip past Slanesh for now. We'll come back to Slanesh. We want to see him. Here he is, one to the right. Yeah. Squid Man. Squid We've man. got Squid Friend. Squid friend, that's the thing the Ideneth have always defined themselves as in, in these skirmish games. They've got a, fr- a little fishy friend. Even the ki- even the leaders in the actual army have like a little fish around them or have like, there's a guy who's got like a beautiful scroll. He's got like a big octopus. Yeah, like, octopus has like, a, hey, the octopus is what actually fights for him. Like he had the, if you have a look at the melee stats for that model, yep. it's the octopus's like mace that is doing the fighting. Yep, yep. I think it's also holding a quill because I think yeah, it's it also writing quill, yeah. for it. Like, because it's so like awesome and like ambidextrous. It's like amazing. So uh, this squid is awesome. But let's flick through some of these models here and let's talk about it because these guys, again, so much Mighty Thrall. Let's talk about another thing about Underworld. So Underworld, is a game that I played um, quite a bit. I love Underworlds. I think it's um, really deep, complex. That is, um, sorry, just to interrupt quickly. That is a fantastic Tidecaster model. I would 100% sub that in for the standard Isher and Tidecaster. Amazing. Oh, I didn't even notice a little jellyfish on a base, yeah. like floating away. That's amazing. There's like two of them. Oh, I amazing. feel like Underworlds now is hitting a hitting a space where it's actually like this is a game, but we're really making these as alternate sculpts for you. Kind of. And that's where I was actually gonna that's kind of where I was getting to, where it's like Underworlds is a game that Warhammer's already complicated, right? 40k being like probably the top of complex, even in 10th edition, people say it's simplified but not simple. It's definitely not simple. Um, I think Sigma is a game that can be very convoluted when you're playing the battle packs, mm-hmm. but still can kind of feel pretty casual. Underworlds definitely hits the wall of how much you're willing to commit to a game. Yeah. Not, on, not only is it a deck building game constructed level, like you're actually building decks for games, they had to introduce a whole format called Rivals just so people could skip the deck building process because that was important to the standard format. Like cards even rotated because... Yeah. Like, and cards were banned in weird ways. Like for example, you had limited cards that said if you had, for example, the uh, Tomb of the Briar Queen, uh, the, the, the Night Haunt, they had five cards that were actually limited. Oh, sorry, no, three cards that were limited which meant you could only bring one of any of those three cards because all three together in the deck were better than most factions they were ever printing. Mm-hmm. They went way too far far with the thorn, thorn, sorry, of the Briar Queen. They were way too far. So, you know, and then trying to catch up with that is a lot. That's just the deck stuff. Going to the actual gameplay where you have to bring a board, compare it to your opponent's board, have an army that works with your board, have a deck with objectives and... and um, What's and hope that that works with your, with your, with your, with your faction and your so, op- against your opponent's faction too. Exactly. So you've got a board you've got to look out for, a faction you've got to look out for. Now, the faction you couldn't edit, that's another thing as well. The faction is all named characters, and that's yep. why you'll notice they have so much character to them because they're not dudes. They're literally named characters that have a story within Underworlds and within wherever they are. And Underworlds has a cool story when you get into the nitty-gritty of it all, but um, like you said... I think they're realizing more and more that, hang on, like this product isn't selling. This product isn't doing what we want mm. it to do. It also is in a weird space where, you know, ages like Warhammer 40k has things like Blackstone Fortress, you know, and it has things like that. But Sigma Cur has City, things like, yeah. th- Sigma has things like Curse City. So they fill the same void. But we don't have Kill Team and then we have, you know, Kill Team or whatever, or like Wrath and Glory in the sense that's not RPG, but in like some other skirmish game. Yeah. Like why does Sigma have Warcry, but also has Underworlds, which are two skirmish games in the Sigma universe using Sigma models? Does it need that? And it also, oh, I forgot to mention, it uses its own dice system, yep. Underworlds. So, so many layers of its own esotericism. And you go, okay, well, I could just play Warhammer, right? And I could play Sigma and play these models and get the same vibe. So, I think, yeah, you like you said, what you learned on earlier, which I built upon, is that um, these are cool sculpts. And I've also been doing this myself. In my faction, I'm playing at 
the Warcry event, I'm using Underworld's models yeah. as stand-ins for those models because I've got like a squig, um, a squig hopper, but it's this guy from Underworld that like has like a hammer at the end of his like spear and he's got, like a little grumpy squig. Then instead of bouncing around with his long legs, it's just trotting along and it's yeah. just a little shorter model. Not for gameplay purposes, but like just for fun. It's a really cool full of flavor model. And he's got like a full knight's helmet like clamped over and you can't see any of his got features. It just looks like a really cool like kind of grizzly knight. So I think he's great. I, th- um, I think the big the big difference between Warcry and Underworlds though is when these factions translate to, when these, these um, units, sorry, translate to Age of Sigmar, I do find that Warhammer Underworlds has a greater... It's not a lot, but there is a slew of um, units in Underworlds that do translate to Age of Sigma. They, Whereas it, I'm very I'm very hard-pressed to find a Warcry release that does translate to um, Age of Sigma. Well, I think it depends, right? Because I, I agree in the sense that, especially in the context of Warha- uh, in Warcry 1, right? Yeah. Where Warcry and those Chaos Cultists, you had to bring those specific units with you. But like, especially in like the Hunter Swanshee, like when you look at the Chameleon Skinks, they're just Chameleon Skinks. Gorges, they're just Gorges. Um, even the Gut Rippers in the Cruel Boys, they're, they're just Gut Rippers. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? And the thing I like though, and where I built on that point as well, is in Underworlds, they have their own real Sigmar as well, like mm-hmm. the actual faction. And some of them are quite good. Yeah. Like the Zandai's was... Truth Seekers in the Stormcast were quite valid. Yeah. And in the other side of that box, the Cruel Boys, um, Mo- Morok Grappa, whatever his name was, um, he had like the cage over his head. He actually gave you a very unique rule, which they made into a generic rule. But he was, if he was your general, you'd actually pick two cruel tricks instead of one on a mm. five plus to start the game, which was only on a five plus. But when you got it, you got two of your army's like intrinsic ability, which you only ever got one of. Now you get two and he'll make it three. Well, even from like Maggot Kingdom Nurgle perspective, I was looking at bringing Fecula Flyborn and her crew of two guys into my Age of Sigma army. Couldn't get the goddamn kits anymore. No, they, they're um, not that easy to get Which anymore. is really frustrating because one of the things they're like is, oh, you can get all these kits as like uh, on the direct website as just easy to build kits after the fact. And I am yet to see any of them since, uh, what was the orange one? Um, when they went, Diacasm? when they... F- was it Diachasm when they first went to Gur? I think that was Diachasm. That might have been right up Diachasm. And Nal- Nalwood? No, it's like Wraith Hol- Wrath Hollow. Whatever. No, there, there's something hollow. Weird Hollow. Weird, weird hollow. hollow. No, Weird Hollow. The weird, weird Hollow, hollow was, one, was a recent new. one. That's a that's re- recent very one. recent one. Like Diac- I think Diachasm. It might have been Diachasm. Diachasm was the... Like, but also, the one that I remember being the last one was the, um, the, the Wolf Riders. The Goblin Wolf Riders. Yeah. The last ones I remember being like, available by themselves. But yeah, so... Um, the point is, uh, also just like stopping on these Slanish, I don't want to skip over the Slanish either. There's a lot of character in those Slanish. Um, yep. I think Slanish demons get a bit, a little bit busy, personally. Um, Ripper Snarl Fangs. Yeah, look at them go. Uh, they get a little bit busy, but I do like them a lot. And I think obviously there's a lot of character in them. So uh, they look just incredible. These models, I think these models are actually probably the hobby side. Yeah. Where, oh, that's so cool. That is my favorite model, I think, from this box, personally. Um, even though I know I was just saying I don't care about Slanish. But um, that is a cool model. I think that they're going to have great rules. And again, these models, again, here's a big thing. And I, I landed on this earlier, and you landed on this a little bit too, where you were talking about translating to Sigma. I think I Sigma, these translating to Warcry. Yeah. So cool. Very characteristic models you can have as one of your warband, and it feels so good. I think with this model in particular, there's also possibly a really cool Gene Stealer Cult kit bash with this. Oh my god, like a magus? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you get like a magus using those legs and even that head and then like swapping the arms out. Oh, a you know, kelomorph? <laughs> yeah, you know what that actually looks like? It looks like the mask. It Remember does the look old like the mask. The mask yeah. model that doesn't that you can't get anymore for some reason. It's yeah. really hard to find. Yeah. I think that's um, a great mask model for sure. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I could definitely That's a stand-in that. for a mask right there. Yeah. But the mask is the mask is Slanesh too, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. That's great. It's just so, like generalized Slanesh demons. When you go and there's the new um the new rivals decks they're bringing out because again, the deck building stuff was too much work for people. I mean, I'm not sorry, not not me like shade on that. I think it was actually genuinely too much work. Can you just go back up to the box in its contents like where it showed like the show off? So there is uh, Is there one that there's Is there only, one board? It's no, that's two boards connected. Oh, okay. There's two boards that yeah, are connected yeah, yeah. at it's the, the side. It just yeah. looks a bit weird. Um, but Definitely looks like a render. <laughs> it definitely looks like a... It, it, it might actually be a render, Dylan. Um, but I think... Yeah, it's actually cool that it's only three Slanesh demons in your Underworlds Warband because even that is a small number of models yeah. for Underworlds, you know? They're definitely going to have a lot of objectives that care about killing and not about holding objectives because they're not going to be able to do that very much. But a lot of I, ability too, I bet. When I, I didn't last long in Underworlds. When it first came out, big fan. Um, I played Steelhearts Champions. 
Yeah, they're cool. Um, I think I only lasted until like the fourth release. And then um, the rats came out. I think I played like two or three games against the rats. And I was like, I think I'm done now. Purely yep. because like the Steel Hearts, the rats essentially invalidated the Steel Hearts entire strategy, which, you know, it that's the game. Games change over time. They get new stuff. But when you're, when you're whole, and that's the element of the deck building to the game as well, is like the Steel Hearts champions was built around, I put a line in my sand, in the sand and you don't cross that line and I won't let you cross that line. But then when you've got the rats come in, they go, cool, I can just move my rat from one side of the board to the other side of the board and now I can start capping objectives behind you. You're like, okay, well, my movement's three. I'm not really, um, not going to be capping any objectives here. So I think I'm done. Yeah, so, and that's the thing where it's like the game then wants you to evolve by changing your whole objective deck and saying, yeah. get not, the get Not the just order changing cards, your whole objective deck, changing your, your entire game. game. Well. Like and yeah, changing what you play. That's true, that's true. I mean, I think uh, I'd like to say that, and this comes back with like, I played ever since Thorns of the... Uh, Briar Queen came out. Yep. I've been playing since then. So that I still was get my games. Never Maze, so I think. Never Maze, I think one. it was. Yeah. Um, so I've been playing since then. I, I play games every so often. I still have. A, I have one friend who I play a lot with. Um, and other than that, we don't really. I don't get my games in, and that's unfortunate. But we love the game personally together. Um, and I've noticed that I think most factions. Now there are some that do get power creep. There's no argument to be said that get power creep is again ha thing that happens in most games. But most factions can still get away with it. It's just that yeah, you would need to take your entire gamut deck and your entire objective deck and, and change just throw so it much out. about it yeah and change so much about it and you, you have to bring the ones that they bring there's still like a limit that you have to start with but then you'd have to change up every other card and then still hope to see those which does suck like it's too hard to keep up with especially and, when and cards also, are like, rotating out and then you'd be changing how you play that faction as well so at the end of the day you become like well i've got to change my whole deck i've got to change i've got to change two decks i got to change how i play my entire like faction against this other faction yes Oh, maybe I'll just get another faction. Yeah, exactly. And at the same time, and then you like, go, do I in want to invest that seventy bucks? Yes. Or do I want to play Warcry? Because <laughs> I feel like I feel like with Warcry, yeah. you know, that game has landed on the good skirmish level where you know you can. I don't think it's fair to say that you want to rely on having the one strategy, right? Because you need to ha you need to yeah, be flexible. Yeah. That's and I'm not saying that's exactly what you're saying, but you need to be flexible. You need to be able to change your strategy on the fly. But I think it's not as stark in a game like Warcry where it's like, okay, well, I'll just, I'll make different tactical decisions, but what my army intrinsically does, still feels yeah. like what intrinsically and does. And I think, I think a big chunk of that in Warcry is because it's not hex-based. Yeah, of course. There's definitely. a lot of stuff in Warhammer Underworlds that is based around how far you can move in hexes, what angle you can move, because you you've got that push and pull mechanic with that as well, so you can push your opponents along hex lines as well, it's very and important. how everything's laid out is very important. So you become like this board control element, and if you if if your faction is built for board control and you're going up against a faction that cannot be controlled on the board, then it's yeah, then it's yeah. get wrecked play another faction yeah essentially i also think whereas, as well that it's like that's that's a layer deeper isn't yeah it? That's we're, a layer we're deeper. sorry sorry just to drop it quickly oh, cool, but with, with Warcry, because you have that free flow thing like you can deploy anywhere based on the deployment map you're not su set on i'm exactly three hexes away from you yeah not i'm quite. i'm you can deploy you can also move your guys anywhere so you can you can play around with how your layers you're not limited to only having one model in a hex space. Yeah, there's greater optimization there yeah. as well, right? Where it's like, I could be like, I could be eight inches from you or I can go nine inches from you. And that's like a big difference. Whereas that may not be a big difference in Underworlds because obviously you can't. But I think also it's like, and you've, you said this really well, you actually talk about that push and pull mechanic, just mobility and movement in Underworlds is so damn crucial. And if you yep. make mistakes on the turn two, your game is literally sometimes over. It is literally Go totally over. That's, Whereas that's, a small move mistake in Warcry, you can usually come back from. Uh, I don't think that's 100% true. But again, it feels definitely less And that's punishing. the one one tiny gripe I have with God Tier, which we will talk about at some point in the future. We'll definitely get on the podcast. Because it is a that game too. that is like essentially taken over the staff here, by the way. Yeah, which it truly is, has. It's just, it's just Underworlds without the deck shit. Yes. And it's... It's Underworlds mint. light in every good way. In every yeah, in every good way. way. Yeah. Um, it's very mint. Uh, yeah. Anyway... So that's so, right. Yeah, that's we talked about Underworlds. We've got, let's not dwell on that too long. Warcry is um, great. Uh, Horus Heresy, Horus Heresy. We don't talk about Horus Heresy? Okay, click on for a second. Big Dreadnought, big guns. It's epic. We just, okay, sorry. We got our first ever, first ever trend. Since the release of Horus Heresy, it's been, here's Mark VI Marines, right? They're on foot. Here's a bunch of upgrades to give them heavy weapons. Tank, 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 tank. tank, tank. Ooh, Mark Threes. 
and a dreadnought. And now we're going to go tank, 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 tank. tank, tank. tank. It's like, we got a flyer. We got a transport recently. And this is the new Daradio dreadnought. This is the stupidest dreadnought. Like, it looks so dumb. It's my favorite dreadnought. If <laughs> it's I could a, play It's these, a contemptor that just had, like, uh, but if actually scale plus it's a 50. It's a Leviathan, actually. It's oh, legs yeah? are a Leviathan dreadnought. And then its body is like a really pulled out contemptor. It's like you got it in Blender and then like pulled it but like <laughs> from its Z axis and went, Wheat. and that's what they did to the, to the contemptor top end. Guy, but the bottom end is exactly in, the Leviathan. Some guy in the games workshop, like model design guy, is just playing around with the mesh tool. Yep, literally. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. And they put a huge set of missiles on the back, huge guns. You can tell I'm a tower player. And it's got the little, <laughs> it's got the nipple heavy bolters. We love that model. It's so cool. Uh, next to its guns, it's got two searchlights, like, boom. Uh, it's like there's a little red light on those guns there and there's little, like a little bit inward towards its body but yeah so these two like spotlights as well you can imagine in night fighting it actually has rules where it will spotlight the area as well and then just like rain down with missiles and firepower it's cool it makes no sense why would anyone design a uh, dreadnought like this but I love it to bits and it's my favourite and look at those look at that the plasma arrays they're just so cool so very cool uh, but we'll go past it. So, and then as you can see there, there's the Mark III right there, which is a little bit of a contentious point right now because all the Mark Threes have a little, like, little World War II pointy spike hat. Um, mm. And everyone's like... And that's right, something that only the hats, Death Guard have. <laughs> which only the Death Guard have. But, you know, there were some examples of others here and there where they were just using discarded armor. But again, everyone's like, well, why do they all have it? That's stupid. Anyway, it's fine. It's cool. Uh, kind of sad that we're not seeing more infantry in Horus Heresy, but that's me. Let's quickly now, talk about Blood Bowl. This is this is your bread and butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the so Blood Bowl um, has a big list of teams teams of legend that has slowly grown smaller over time. Um, this is where they throw the teams that they used to have in Blood Bowl, but when they updated the second season edition, they never really spoke about them anymore. They were like, oh, yeah, if you want to play vampires, use some stuff. Um, but they're been slowly releasing teams. You know, we've had the Nordic the Norse team now. Uh, we've had. Um, the Amazons finally get uh, models, and now we're getting vampires. So, new vampire models, thralls, vampires, great. The original list, the original like squads for these in- included uh, included vampires and thralls. Those were your two options to take on the fields, but now they've actually added positionals. So you can have dedicated blitzers, you can have dedicated throwers of vampires, um, and you still need to make sure that they end up near a, um, a thrall, otherwise uh, they're going to be pretty pretty useless. Because they like drink the blood of their thralls mid-game, don't they? Yeah. That's so yeah. cool. Such a fluffy mechanic. Uh, they also have like hypnotic gaze where they can just like zoot someone, do a roll off with them, and that that uh, player loses their tackle zone, so you can't. You can just walk right past them. They, they can't tackle you. They can't. Do- you have, don't have to do a dodge. Does that next guy have a wing there, Connor? He has a wing. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah, yeah. They brought in a little bit of the um, the flesh eater court stuff into it too. It's they, these models are again. We say it's a lot oozing with flavor. I love like the thralls with their like kind of puffy kind of shirts and their yeah. puffy coats. The very like Victorian era looking kind of uh, very. Well, it's a very. Uh, it's the cast iron. It's all based off like the old world cast iron vampire stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's very good. It's very, very sexy. Cool. Uh, it's, it should be a good addition to Blood Bowl. I'm I'm interested to see how the positionals play out. Um, it is a refreshing change to just running four vampires and uh, twelve thralls. Yes. Um, but you know, we'll see. We'll see what they are when the rules drop, when the spike magazine comes out. So yeah. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I just love their models so much. Um, I oh think yeah, they're going to be great to hobby. It's it's really upsetting cool. because uh, I originally did. <laughs> I made a vampire team that um, because models didn't exist for them. Um, a lot of that's a lot of how it works with um, with with Blood Bowl is the models don't exist so you just get like you can just buy STLs to print or you can just kit bash stuff um, I did kit bash a full faction um, or a full team it was four different like whiz kids and reaper vampires that's cool and then just 12 whiz kids children minis <laughs> that's rad that's that's messed up but that's rad. I like that. That's cool. It was called the Lamian Little League. <laughs> <laughs> that's messed up. Dude. We love that. Though. That's <laughs> the cool. kids, the kid, like the minis. If you've seen the minis from Whiz Kids, the the little girls in it have apples, and the little boys are carrying like a bucket of water. No bucket of blood, and the girls were carrying oranges because you need that vitamin C after nice. you get drained. That's cool. <laughs> that's really cool. That's uh, see. That's I think that's where. You know, any faction that kind of gives you that kind of cool self-expression is awesome. Yeah, that's really Blood cool Bowl's fun for that. It's, it's crazy. Like my halfling tree men are uh, kit-bashed Kurnoth hunters. Yeah, yeah. And I've seen them. They're really cool, actually. Um, um, we got Old World Model got announced. 
Oh, a model, very cool. Um, this is something that I kind of like. Yeah, I I said this before. I'll I'll say it again. I'm like, it's kind of just like a chick on a horse. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of just like a dude. I don't but know. But it's like, the it's, lady. It's the I know it's the lady. It's I know the it's Bretonian Br- lady. Lady. I do think it's an awesome model. I think it's super, super, super high quality. Um, I think the paint job is obviously bringing so much attention to so many different parts. The the beautiful like lacing on the bottom of her dress and those mm-hmm. like thorns that looks like they paint on there just amazing and really the, all the quality even like all the way down to the eye of the unicorn is absolutely incredible um and yeah they've been doing a great job of announcing models for warhammer old worlds but what they haven't done is let anyone know how the game plays yeah no i think we'll find out that it's, it'll be a bit like horror heritage in the sense that we'll see those rules from classic come back it'll feel a lot like the classic rank of flank i don't expect them to change up too much it'll probably just have like a reaction system and be those classic rules if yeah. i were a betting man i would say that's what's going on but again see that stuff's really cool i like it a lot um i think that with these kind of models you don't necessarily want to paint them too far out of the realm of what they are kind of canonically yeah. um and i think it's great it does i think maybe this paint job for me isn't doing it because it is like whites blending with whites and then pinks blending with pinks and a bit of blondes and then there's that kind of st- the, the flowers are a little bit striking but do I still think blend in a bit much and it's the staff that gets it for me but even then it is kind of like a very uh, like if I picked that up in a Pathfinder campaign I wouldn't blink twice if that makes sense yeah. right? if I found that in the Shadowfell in Baldur's Gate 3 I wouldn't blink twice like it doesn't it feels a little bit derivative but um, it, yeah. Charles, Look, tell us in the comments if you're really excited for Old World I want to see Tomb, Tomb King reveals yeah. where are my Tomb King reveals full Tomb Kings and then you know what's going to happen I want to see that you know what's going to happen right they're going to be like well, I guess here's some rules for Age of Sigma. Models, yeah, yeah. If you have square bases at home. No, 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 no. It'll be the oh, other way. Move the other way around. Yeah, 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 you know what? They will, they will. They'll do it. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I, I'm all for it. I'll get my round bases ready right now. You know, they did say that they're not making all new models and that they are bringing back some of the classic sculpts, which is very exciting. So Tomb King's got a massive refresh before they yeah. killed Warhammer Fantasy. Exactly. I, now that I'm in a position where I can actually afford like Tomb King models, like a Ford Warhammer. Um, the old Tomb King stuff was like, it almost drew me into fantasy. It did. I actually remember, I used to have the 2009, that same catalog I mentioned earlier. I used to look at the Tomb Kings and like every second day after school, I would pull that book open. I'd start looking at Tomb King, I'd draw some Skelly Man and be like, that's going to be my army when I can get yeah. to it. And the game died before I could afford it. Um, but oh my gosh, um, the Necro Sphinxes. Yes. Um, there were those, um, I forget the name of them, but they were like the uh, the snake, like with the spears, they're like kind of the cobra bodies. Like they're like a huge snake creature. Yeah, they have the stalkers, something stalkers. And they're just incredible. Um, yeah. I loved all those models. So yeah. yeah, and Cetra was such a cool character being like kind of a good guy. He was kind of a good kinda. guy. He did like, he kinda. worked with the Gord rule. And like, then Ark is just like, <laughs> you're dead. I'm the worst guy. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it was cool. So I think Tomb Kings, uh, I don't want to see girl and horse. Yeah, see, it's definitely an update to the model. That's for sure. Yeah, but um, look at the character, right? I don't know if the character of the new one speaks like these old ones to me these old ones kind of look how grizzled that horse is on the right that yeah. unicorn on the right you know what he's so grumpy that's the big problem with warhammer the old world all they needed to do was just make the same models from the old times that were in pewter and just put them look in plastic a, yeah look at a great <laughs> ha- cool hat <laughs> that's the charm of it that's the charm of the old world is yeah. those goblin green bases yeah that's another thing as well so i don't know they're cool i don't want to, i don't want to say like the model isn't really well made oh excuse me sorry I don't want to say it's not really well made. It is really well made. So, oh, oh, okay. oh my god! This if this Ugh. if this doesn't have Warhammer 40k rules, it's going to be a big letdown because that Dylan, they already confirmed it will not and does not have 40k rules. That's they a said lie. that on They're the stream. Make it. They said I give it six months. You know who doesn't have 40k rules? Horus Ascended. And that this is the same line of miniatures. When they made Horus Ascended, oh. they promised they would make an Ascended variant of all the Chaos Primarchs. And this is the second in the line of the Ascended line. This is Fulgrim Ascended. This is during the Horus Heresy. If we get one for 40k, he will be so far beyond human, it will not be funny. He's going to go to Mortarian sized. He's going to go... Well, this is big, but he's going to go to like full-on demon. Isn't this like the same... Oh, sorry. Is this like the same size as Marathi? It's a big... I think it's bigger actually overall because of the wings. Because of the wings. But I think the height of it, the body is, yes, the size of Marathi. Like, don't, I'm not saying he's not a big model. Like, That's he's a big, big model. model. What I'm saying is his physical human parts are going to be so extravagantly oh, elongated yeah, yeah, yeah. into a demon creature that it's not even funny. In the fact that, like, currently in the story, he's often seen as a huge wisping purple smoke cloud where his head should be. So he's going to be so beyond human, it's not funny. This is just him as the blade fully took over his form. And he was just ascending to Slanesh. So um, scroll down, Con, I think there's even, they show even more, like, closer details for this. 
That's so good. It's incredible. It is the most impressive model I've seen from the Horus Heresy range, That's in my just, personal opinion. Everything just run about that it, as a goddamn Slanesh demon prince. It is, yeah, it is incredible detail all the way through. It's tiny, meticulous detail. Um, I play Empress Children Traders as my Horus Heresy army. I am so, so tempted. This model's not going to be cheap. It'll be like a $300 Australian yeah, model easily. minimum before, before like, I hope it'll be free shipping for that price, but we'll see. Um, it's a resin mini as well. So, you know, putting one of those together. It's a modern resin mini, which is quite quali- high quality, I, do, I will say. But, you know, just... Will that even get it like an in-store release? Will that be no. like a shop? That's a Forge World or It'll shop be, It's only? Forge World. It will come, yeah, we will make a physical release. Maybe like, maybe like, we'll have a Malkravat might get one in, but you know, it won't be a physical store release. It will come out for Forge World. I know it sucks, but it's just- You know what? If you have one of those, if you're playing Hidden Knights of Slanesh and you have one of those acting as your Demon Prince, I'd allow it. I don't care about the base size. Oh yeah, dude. I'd allow it. It's fine. That's just awesome. It's awesome. I think that model is just, this is definitely um, my, the winner. Yeah. Uh, it, all those little faces, ha- those, those cut off faces hanging from his coat. This is- um, my winner for the entire Nova reveal for sure. And it's not, I'm not alone on that. Yeah. Um, it is objectively the best model. My favorite is still the more grunter, not necessarily a reveal of that, but my favorite is still the pig, but this is the winner yeah. by far. It is so, so incredible. Everything about it from, from tip to t- tiny tip. It is everything yeah. you want from Fogram. And there's one thing that Sinesh likes. It's tips. It's the, it's the tip. It's the tip. <laughs> um, and not just the tip, but I'll tell you <laughs> just, there's nothing I don't love about this model. Yeah. It's great. It's great. I don't. I can't. I can't say anything else. It's just a great looking model. Yeah, it's it's the best. It's the best. So, is that um, it? Is that it? Is all that stuff? Let's talk. I do want to talk about tenth edition uh, very quickly. Uh, the data slate has dropped. The big balance data slate. Mm-hmm. This is the biggest one. We had some random stuff. You know, uh, for example. Um, the Death Watch got a small nerf before um, their stuff dropped. We had a huge points change as far as like towering went and stuff like that. And a lot of units got changed in that respect. Mm-hmm. But this is the big, big data slate. So this, is, so this is huge. Yeah. Incredible. So, it, so important stuff to mention. Devastating wounds. Devastating wounds used to be that if you scored a critical wound, that's a six to wound, your damage would convert to mortal wounds. This meant that your, uh, your opponent's army would not have a save against it. That was the intention. What it also meant is that... so. Sorry, bit of context. In Warhammer 40,000, when you damage a unit, say it's a unit of 10 models, each shot you do into that will go into a model until it dies, right? So say I have a gun that shoots a bolt round. It does one damage to a model. If the model has two wounds, it has to do that twice. Easy Mm -hmm. as. But it goes the other way around. If I have a Laz Cannon that does six damage to something and I shoot a cultist with it, it's going to do six damage to one of those cultists. And it's going to turn him into a fine pink mist, right? Which is great. But it means Laz Cannons aren't as effective into those. You want to shoot Laz Cannons in the tanks. Well, if I hit something with Mortal Wounds, those Mortal Wounds travel over. So they do one damage to the Cultist, which then kills it. It'll do another damage to another Cultist that kills it. It'll do all six as Mortal Wounds, killing six Cultists. That's like lining up the six Cultists in, in like a gallery and going, bang, one Laz Cannon yeah. shot through all or six. Or the Laz Cannon guy is just like, Bing. just lifted on and gone. <laughs> or it's hit like the Cultist gone, ding, 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 and hit all six of them like, like a pinball machine, right? Now, that obviously wasn't what they intended for it to work like. I think they kind of knew it was happening, but also wanted to see how it went. They've now said that if you cause score a critical wound, your opponent cannot make saves of any kind. They still get a feel no pain, but no saves of any kind can be made against it, which is very, very powerful. Um, so it's, still it's, a, it's the same as mortal wounds, except it doesn't roll over between Correct. Models. It's just damage. It doesn't also count as mortal wounds. So things that yeah. have a shrug against them don't randomly have really good matchups for devastating wounds. For yeah. example, um, custodies have a built-in four-up feel no pain, which is a four-up 50-50 halve your damage against uh, mortal wounds specifically um, because they're meant to be like anti-psychic. But all yeah. of a sudden... They were eating devastating wounds, which was very powerful. And, you know, that no longer working is a hit to the custodies. That sucks for custodies players. But again, it wasn't really your intention. You wanted to be against psychic yeah. stuff, and now you're not. And so. to be fair, you are playing custodies. So I don't think it really changes you that much. <laughs> to be fair. And also, I do want to say that they gave a lot of psychic abilities devastating wounds as part of their profile because that represented the ability for the psychic power to get through your save. Mm-hmm. So now that it doesn't do that anymore, a lot of it's not good against psychic either. So I see both sides of this argument. I want to open with that. I do fully understand why that's frustrating. As a player who plays Tau Empire, my broadside battle suits just got worse because they have a four-up feeling against mortal wounds as well, which means they're not as tanky against devastating wounds. And with their two-plus save, right, being a very tanky up to a 10 wound model if I need it to be, you know, it's going to get eaten up by devastating wounds mm-hmm. now. That has no save. I get destroyed. So it kind of uh, is the point of devastating wounds. It kind of meant to be devastating. Their wounds are meant to be devastating. So I get it. Uh, but again, I'm meant to be good against those devastating wounds weapons, but I'm not anymore. And that's like, you have to get past it, unfortunately. 
We have a lot of changes, things like fire overwatch. You can no longer fire overwatch if your enemy unit is not visible to you. That means that your uh, whirlwind missile battery that shoots into the sky can no longer overwatch enemies as they move forward, which is a huge and very important change. And finally, you cannot overwatch with units with the titanic keyword. So if you're a knights player and your whole army has a titanic keyword, you can't overwatch. Yeah. That sucks. I get it. But it also means that if you're playing Elder and you have a, um, what are they called again? A, um, they are not a, not a, oh, not a Wraith Knight. There's one step above it. It's like a Reaver Titan. It's like a, it's like a Titan from Forge World. There's a Titan from Forge World that we're seeing play. It's an 1100 point model. It's not the gigantic Guardian one. It's like the, it's like a jetpack one. And this gigantic uh, Titan was actually seeing play in online events. And because nobody has one in real life, like it's crazy. Um, and it's, uh. It had like a 3d6 on each flamer at like armor penetration of two and damage of like two. And it was just like, okay, I overwatch your unit and I ignore line of sight because I'm a, t I'm a titan and I can overwatch you. 66 flamers. And because I'm no longer hitting, uh, there's that top one. What's well, the Revenant Titan? Thank you. So the Revenant Titan, look at that thing. This thing could overwatch your entire army very easily and just wow, with its big photon flamers, which is just freaking hilarious. So um, anyway. So that's the big change there as well. That's really huge. Um, stuff like ruins invisibility. Um, aircraft models are exceptions to visibility. And now um, towering units don't ignore it. They have to tow into the terrain in order to ignore it, which is technically how all obscuring worked in 9th edition. Mm -hmm. But now in 10th edition, your model has to be wholly within the terrain piece to now ignore the shooting through it. As in like can ignore walls and such. Oh, sorry. It ignores the obscuring rule. They don't ignore physical walls, but they can ignore the obscuring rule. It ta towering models because obviously they can't fit in a ruin they're titans they could touch the toe of the ruin but that means the ruin in front of them they can't touch which mm -hmm. they can't shoot through so they can't shoot across the so entire it, map it, it seems like a rule that was kind of already in effect with some of the updates to tournaments from what yes, I understand people in tournaments were already actually they were more egregious in the sense that they were just like no we'd remove the towering rule that's fair in that's tournaments fair. they said no it's not good and games workshop go or Warhammer goes well the rules team I mean to say they go no hang on we want towering to have that kind of ability so uh, that's big changes um, and then finally what's really important well I saw that insane bravery though yes was it insane bravery you can only use once per battle uh, yes, correct. So in ninth edition, that was already the case. And because they thought Battleshock would be very important, they made it so that you can't do once battle. Now they're like, okay, you know, we want Battleshock to matter. So we're not going to let you do it every single turn again. So yes, it has been changed as well. Um, and then you, you do it, um, before you roll the Battleshock test where before it was after you after failed. After you failed it. Yeah. So yeah. now it's like, oh, you have to do it. You have to commit to it before you take the oh, test. After. Mm, okay. Yeah. So now I always just did it before. Yeah, well... Because that was the old way to do it, right? That was the yeah. old way to do it. So, um, so now, yeah, it's back to the way it was, which is useful. I think it's fine. Um, we had some changes to armies. So Death Guard actually has got a brand new ability. So Death Guard had an aura of giving you minus one toughness because you're getting sick. Yep. Now, their aura, not only does the minus one toughness, it, does it now says stuff. one of three things. Then minus you get to choose. One, you get to choose one at the start of the game, right? Minus one to you have their save characteristic. Yeah. Minus one to their ballistic skill or weapon skill. Yep. Minus one to their objective control. What I say? Or. Oh, yeah, sorry, both. Well, it's not going to, sorry, it's never going to matter at the same time. Yeah. yeah. And, and the skill and weapon skill. And the key thing there is it's done during the um, declare battle formation step. So that is Correct. when you already know what your opponent, what your is, opponent playing. is playing. Correct. So you do it at the start of the game before you've put everything down. Um, when you're choosing what goes in transports and such, um, that's when you go, okay, I'm going to pick one of these three. And yeah, the, the fact that you're putting their objective control down as well and their leadership is very useful. Mm -hmm. But again, the minus one to bliss skill, weapon skill, I played against them recently as Tau with these updates. Um, Tau also got some little bit of love um, in the sense of points. Um, you know, that was huge. My army hits on fours, it was all hitting on fives. I had to, do a lot of, I had to use a lot of rules to get, circumvent that, but it was very, very powerful. Um, Custodes got some nerfs in the sense that um, no longer can you bring a 10-man brick of Custodes Guard. What was that? Down to five-man bricks. Um, Mechanicus finally got their invols back up. They have yeah, five-up yeah. invols and four-up saves. Uh, on, L on just the Skataris, which that's is, correct. you know, the, the, the bread like, and butter. Yeah, the bread and butter of the army. That's like the hammer of your army. Um, Eldari, you know, they um, you can only use the Phantasm on infantry now. Before, yeah. it was like when you got too close to a Wraith Lord, yeah, it just walks away. Got too close to a so tank, it walks away. The Eldari stuff, I'm not seeing updates to their... Um, 
fate dice. Their fate dice stuff. Do you reckon devastating the change to devastating wounds is going to affect the problem a lot of people had with the Eldari fate dice? Absolutely. I think it's like big, think about this, right? They also nerfed the ability for the Wraith Knights to shoot at anything. True. And they were the ones with the devastating wounds yep. more often than not. So there's that. They changed the exaction squads. Um, and then finally they've um changed up so only bolt weapons benefit from the Death Watch rule that actually gave the um special stuff we had problems with. It still uh excludes devastating weapons on the Hellfires, but now it's only bolt as well because it was a little bit too yeah. you know unbalanced in that respect. So that's the faction rule changes. Oh, and finally Votan and G Slow Gods got changed. G Slow Gods got a massive nerf. They no longer get up automatically. They get up on five pluses instead of four pluses with the battle line getting up on four pluses. So, you know, they're no longer just infinitely spawning dudes. And Leagues of Votan, no longer do they get to pick a unit to have two judgment tokens. They pick four units in yeah. a 2,000 point game to have two judgment tokens each. That's Incredible. good. That's good. Yeah, Leagues really dropped in the new edition. Yes. And the more important point than any of this, oh yeah, Desolations also went up. Desolations went to four, uh, five models a unit and longer 10. Um, Pyrrhal Knights got a bunch of changes and Grey Knights also got their stuff. As you can see, it says change to strategic deploy stratagem on the Grey Knights change. That's because there is an up change to stratagems altogether where you can only use free abilities that give you like free stratagems and stuff like that. And also vecting them, make them cost more. Those things only work on epic deeds. Um, so only a very small amount of stratagems mm -hmm. now get affected by that. It does include the command reroll, but not your entire army's fat stratagems, right? That's um, cool. Finally, the points. Um, everything got changed. A lot of stuff got more expensive. A lot of stuff got way cheaper. Mm -hmm. Votan is a horde army. They yep. got. They are talking 450 points down. That's a big change from when Votan dropped and everyone's like, this army's busted. Why is anyone playing this? Oh. And now it's like... They definitely overcorrected. Yeah. And they're now correcting backwards. They might have overcorrected backwards. It feels like they just don't know what to do with Votan. So we'll see what happens. I think um, it's, I think it's the, the problem with like not being able to give Votan an identity. Exactly, right? It's a, it's a Xenos light army that shoots. All yeah. of a sudden it's like in the tower space, but it's also in the Imperial Guard space, the Asmol yeah. space. It has weird melee options and good transports. All of a sudden it's in the Skatari Admex space. All of a yeah. sudden it's in like the Drakari space. What's going on with it? So we'll have to see what happens. Yeah. Or if it, now you're going to Horde now, like is it the Gene Stealer Cold is, space? Is yeah. the Gene Stealer Cold, Cold space? What's going with on? With mid-range shooting. Um, tower Empire, uh, I've saved, I think 350 points in one of my lists. Mm -hmm. um, my tower looking really powerful. Um, I think Necrons are one of the factions that came out on top as far as points changes are concerned um they were already only because they were already a probably an a minus a tier faction and they're coming up to that a plus tier we're talking a 51 percent win rate faction 40 percent win rate faction that's probably hitting the 55 to 56 percent win rate now so i wouldn't be surprised if we see some events going five o's with necrons coming up cool. um, i think they're very very good especially seeing as they were being checked by a lot of the good factions out there we will see a lot of factions show that like uh, rear the ugly heads now i think it's gonna be a huge change to the metagame and the points i think are the most important change there We've gone through all of this, though. That's the data slate. I think 10th edition... You know what? Outside the data slate, I think 10th edition was great fun. Uh, casually, it's been a great experience. Um, I think that there's not a huge problem with the game intrinsically, especially in spaces like um, Combat Patrol, yeah, um, boarding I, action. Like, for me, Combat Patrol is kind of where it's at for me. Like, yeah. the, I, I dropped out in 9th um, and haven't really been enticed back but the combat patrol system is like a really easy way for me to, to for me to find the games and just Definitely. jump in when i feel like it so and that's me with boarding action boarding yeah. action has been for me what combat patrol is to you it's the way i play the game more often than not the game i was mentioning earlier with tau against um uh i just forgot what i was versing anyway the game i played recently with tau that was a 2000 point game of warhammer 40k um but again you know i'm playing a lot of boarding action that's a great way of playing the game lots of ways to play but even the base game was really good as long as you're playing in a casual setting. Your opponent's not bringing like a billion basilisks or desolation squads. 30 desolation marines was a bit hard to deal with. Yeah. Nowadays, 15 might be easy to work with. Cool. All right. Well, those are our, those are our thoughts on where Warhammer is at, both in Age of Sigma, Warcry, 40K, everything there. Um, yeah, let us know in the reveals. comments uh, what, what's your favorite model coming out for, for Warhammer? Like what you've seen in the Nova Opens, uh, what you've seen today. What are you looking forward to? Um, I, I know I'm looking forward to more uh, more Iron Jaws. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys like? Yeah, Anything uh, else? I think that's it, everything. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, ring subscribe that bell. Subscribe to the channel. Get um, notified like every kind of time stuff. a new video goes live here on the From the Vault podcast. And let we'll have a look through the comments of our favorite model announcement. And yes. you know what? We'll pin the top one if you let us know why you like that model as well. So Absolutely. We'll pin that in the comments below. Um, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, you, Connor, in the background thanks, there. Thank you, Trent. Thank you, Dylan. And oh. again, most importantly, guys, everyone at home, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And thank you for liking and subscribing. It means the world yeah. to us. Stay safe. Wash your goddamn hands. Bye, Goodbye, everyone. everyone. Goodbye.